So this morning it looks like the weatherman has finally got the final laugh on us. I took I checked the weather last night and they said it was going to be thunder showers and thunderstorms all night and boy it, there was. <laughs> in fact I think somebody got killed over in New York City or in Washington or somewhere from the lightning. Hey, all beside the point. The point is very simple. Today the roads are going to be wet even when it does stop raining, but it's supposed to be raining on and off. So here, and this is, I think this is useful information. I think this is probably more useful than you think. I always try to plan out my day. So on, on the best of days when it's nice and sunny and, you know, within the temperature range you want to ride in, I get my rides in. But then there's always the days I have to plan around, well, today I can do things other than riding because of the weather. So one of the things I try to do, I try to keep track of my inventory. And I noticed this morning, I'm doing my little inventory thing. Holy mackerel, I'm missing one of the products that, and I'm, let me just show this. You think he would have this all staged up like a professional. This is what the simple green container, but this is the stuff you buy from Harbor Freight. And it's a degreasing agent. And I thought, wow, you know what? I, I don't think I've ever put this information on the video. This is, I, I'm going to go see what the price is today because we're going to go to Harbor Freight today. That It's a degreasing agent that's unbelievably good for a lot of things. I have never found a better product for. The first, pro, the first thing, when you pull your bike into the yard and or your car and, and you get one drop of grease from the chain or oil or bird poops, this takes it right off. Now, the reason I found this out, one of my unnamed friends, we will not mention any name, had his vehicle in my driveway one day and it dropped a, a quart of oil. And I tried everything. I, I tried acetone even. And the only thing that took it off was this. Now, it's really good. There's uses for it in motorcycling. The only problem is it comes from Harbor Freight, such full strength. If you spray it full strength right on aluminum, it etches the aluminum. The aluminum comes out etched. So there may be uses for that in the real world. Well, for polishing up your bike, that's, that's really not what you want. So what I found out is anyway, and, and we'll, I'm going to show this in real life. If you mix it 50-50, mm, and actually it'll hurt paint too if the paint is soft and new. So it's a product that's really, really super good for things that you want to do. And an example is you're changing the chain out and you want to get that cover that's that's always got the grease and kerosene hardly even takes it off. This will soften it right up. When you want to get a stick and get in between the fins, beautiful. There's a lot of a lot of good uses for this. Number two, the thing that's good about it, it's not flammable. So here's another thing that we found out during one of the A-team meetings. It was pretty, I don't think it was funny. It was actually dangerous. In Bob Navola's garage, somebody sprayed, I don't remember who, somebody sprayed parts cleaner on the engine after it had been running. Oh, it, yeah, it's flammable. So <laughs> could ruin your whole day. But anyway, I, I thought today, since we can't ride, we'll try to share some useful information about this product and maybe some of the other products we have here if we have time because I'm, I'm a fanatic about keeping the bikes clean. I like to keep them clean because 25 year old bikes need a lot of maintenance or else they look you know, terrible. New bikes, eh, less maintenance. You know, they're all flat black anyway. So, but, but here's when you want to have something really nice and clean, really nice and shiny or that you're going to work on it and you want it clean. This product from Harbor Freight, now, when I go there today, they better have it in stock, too, because I've got an issue with my driveway that I'm going to show. It's not oil. I've got a, a kind of algae growing on a driveway that I have. Soap doesn't even put a dent in it. So I'm looking, forward, I'm looking forward to my trip to Harbor Freight today. I'll try to share the information of using this. This is really a useful product, something if you have motorcycles and you want to keep them clean, this is something that can really be your best friend. But of course, before we start any day, we have the, the normal farming <laughs> maintenance. Feed the fish, feed the birds, feed me. Get the coffee brewing. You don't feed these fish. They jump out of the water and put grease on your driveway. Because of all the rain in the last couple days, especially last night, Karen's garden is just blooming away. Her tomatoes are growing away. Everything's growing. It's just, oh, look at a robin over there. There's a robin walking around in my garden. It's just 
it's supposed to rain on and off all day. That's the problem. And nothing makes a rainy day better than a nice warm cup of coffee. Well, they're even on my windowsill this morning. Oh, God. Everybody's hungry this morning, including me. So this is some really, really good information, I think. Now, it, a lot of people, they will take a garden hose and hose it. I don't ever, ever do that. I don't want, I try to minimize. Water is a motorcycle's worst enemy. If you don't need it, don't put it on. Having a, a paint stick and an old microfiber, and I know I've shown this trick before, but here's a couple of things. If you spray some on, where are you gonna clean? Now, this bike came back the last time we rode it. it there were a few raindrops, so what'll happen is, if I spend 10, 15 minutes this morning cleaning it all up, next time I ride it, it's gonna be whistle clean. Now, some people don't ever do this, and some people like me that that need, you know, psychiatrist help, and or whatever, but I do like to have it clean. And there's a lot of reasons for having it clean. First of all, if the goop builds up in the fins, and I've already polished the edges of these fins, and I know there are people saying, oh, but I, I, it's too much work, oh, you know, I, I'd, I'd rather you know, do this in the morning or do that in the morning, but there's, and I'm just showing one little part of the engine, actually. Actually, to be honest, a lot of times I'll, I'll just, I'll get a pillow from outside and get underneath here where it's really dirty. But the trick is, and I want to emphasize it, never spray this stuff on full strength. I'm gonna show, I'll, I'll try to do a demo if I can find an old aluminum part. What happens? It is really brutally powerful stuff. It's made to be watered down. They sell it like condensed orange juice. But you know, in my, uh, in my evil ways, I'm always trying to invent something or trying to come up with something that I think is gonna be better and, and I'll, I have done this and started off with a perfectly clean microfiber and that just came out of the laundry. And at the end of the job, I go, holy mackerel, no wonder that. <laughs> there was a lot of grease on it. So this is a, just another, another area where, and I know Vince has this really cool set of wheels we've been talking about doing for him, but even if you do them, that doesn't mean they're going to stay clean forever. You've got to spend a little time. Every once in a while, you've got to just bite the bullet and clean them. And for people that want to have clean stuff, and I'm one of them, there's really no substitute. This, this is a really good product. Now, again, I don't put it on full strength ever. That's that not on paint. This is paint is probably six, seven years old already. But there's, there's a use for it. It really goes down, especially where the chain is. Any, anywhere where you have built up road grime, this really seems to take it and put a really big dent in it. Then the dry part of the microfiber, if you just wipe it down, this, it really comes out great. Now, I would also, in my case, because the bikes do get ridden in inclement weather, oh, like just like the other day, we came home and it was really raining and crappy. So one of the things I like to do at the end of it is put a little bit of the Meguiar's wax on just for protection, but but again, there's two things. If you take wax and just go over dirt, I'm not sure it just you just make grinding compound out of it. Doing this, this seems to be the way to keep it to clean, the the most efficient way of keeping it clean. And then when the microfibers get greasy and dirty, they've already got soap in them. Just throw them right in the laundry. And don't put them in with your wife's underwear. Separate load, always a separate load. Microfibers don't go in with anything but microfibers. You might be thinking, why bother, bother cleaning stuff that you almost never see? Well, because here's the thing. I have to work on this bike. All of these older bikes, they do need maintenance. And when I do need to do it, it's, a, it's just a whole lot nicer and neater and easier and more fun for me and more relaxing when I don't have to deal with a grease pit. And... <sighs> I don't enjoy, some of the jobs I don't enjoy much, and when they're dirty, I don't enjoy them at all. But they do have to be done. And underneath here, this, this loosens up the grease, especially back by the chain. That'll just, just re clean it right up. So just another warning about when, why I'm trying to explain this, when you're using degreasing products, you really shouldn't put them on any polished aluminum surface. Because 
These are polished surfaces. When they come from Suzuki, when this bike was made, they had a coating of a clear finish on them that with, uh, believe me, the only way to get it off is with a, a, a grindstone. But but now that you can, now that I can polish this, and I can polish the aluminum parts because I've I did get that coating off. Now if I am if I go and spray these with that, and if I spray them full strength, they're ruined. So the degreasing agent, once I get all the parts that I want to degrease, now I can be very careful. With just, as soon as that rag turns black, you know it's working. Now, in a matter of, let's say, five minutes of a rainy day. Now, I don't know what other people do on rainy days. I usually, I'm usually out in the garage for a couple hours, and Karen kind of likes it. She brings me out a cup of coffee, and she says, how you doing? And I ask her how the vegetables are growing, and at the end of it, now, the next time we ride this bike, it should be, <laughs> it should be all nice and clean. It should be degreased. It should be cleaned. It, it's just one of the things. Now, there's a final thing I wanted to show, because this is really, really another good trick that a lot of people don't aren't aware of. I set the compressor for 100 pounds, and I have a tool that, that you can buy at Harbor Freight that gets way down in there where you could never even get a rag or a stick, and you can blow a lot of the dirt and grease right off. Now, on a, on a GS especially, any air-cooled bike, there's always some spots you just can't get in. By the way, this is the Harbor Freight tool. Very long and a very, a very high velocity, so like a power washer. And they also make the one with a little tube. I have that one here. I'll show it. Haven't found that to be as useful as this one because this has a little probe you can get right, right down in there. And a lot of times, if I do up here by the brake calipers, you can blow out all the dust out of the great brake calipers. That may or may not have some benefit. But I know having having a bike that you look at it and you, you, you think, wow, the bike doesn't have that many miles on it. Oh, no. This, this bike has a lot of miles on it. That, but the whole thing is I've tried to maintain it to the best of my ability. And within, you know, within the, uh, you know, I don't want to spend $1,000 a week on it. But just doing it with a lot of hand labor and a lot of, a lot of passion. I thought I'd show this tool also from, from Harbor Freight, of course, and it's got a tube. So what, what I tried to do with this at the very beginning, I mixed up some of the product from Harbor Freight, and I mixed it up 10 to 1, so it was very weak. And then I'd, pre I'd spray it in, the air pressure sucks up the tube, so in, in essence, you're almost like wet sandblasting. The problem is this is, is so brutal it, it was just getting things wet that I didn't want to get wet. And I realized, you know, there's jobs for this, and I have found some. But I like to detail out a bike very gently and by hand. I don't like to just... And an example, there's a, there actually is a video on YouTube of a guy with a Harley, and he has wife or girlfriend on the back, and they just drove through a car wash with him sitting on the bike. And I guess he got a, his monthly bath, too. But that that's not the objective. The objective is to do a delicate job that when it's all done you haven't done more damage than you've done and I know people that have I will not mention any names taken a power washer to a bike and then went to start it and it wouldn't start because the water is in some of the connectors or whatever they tried to do up under the tank I don't know but it's not for me maybe for other people not for me I like the method that I have shown over and over on my videos and the information I try to share and and the results speak for themselves I think we have a nice collection of bikes, and we haven't spent a lot of a fortune of money. And this is where this, the 50-50 the mix is so good, is to get any of the chain grease, the chain lube, chain wax, whatever you're using, and get that wheel to be really nice and grease and res, get all the residual stuff off and the whatever grease, the brake, the brake pad dust, everything. Now it even works, to be honest, it even works good on getting the stuff off the sprocket. Now whenever I've done this job with either diesel fuel or kerosene or whatever, the garage stinks to holy hell and I get some on my clothes and then 
the, the, the clothes stink, but this stuff is, I, I have found a lot of uses for it. That's why I thought I'd share it. And maybe there's some people that don't even know about it or have never bought a gallon of it or that in some way they, they can benefit from this information. And maybe some people, you just need to inspire them that on that next rainy day you have, and go out and clean your bike. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> or maybe not. Now, just to make a point, I spent many, many hours, all of the wheels on all of the bikes, basically all of them. There's no more stock wheels left. They, all of the time, all of the effort I put into these custom wheels, the whole idea now, now is to maintain them. Don't let them get full of stone chips. Keep them clean and waxed. Don't let the brake dust build up to where they're really ugly. And the ones that are hand buffed, they, cl they clean up so easily in a matter of seconds. They clean up. And by the way, one of the things, since I put the, the center stand back on the GS, I'm a lot more prone to come back from a ride and clean all the brake dust and everything off the back wheel. Where I was really lazy before, actually I was pretty, really lazy. Sometimes when I clean it, I say, I didn't do this for a week, and it's really a mess. So I always try on my little daily videos to try to give out some good information, some good tips, usable information. You know, not things that cost thousands of dollars to do, hundreds of dollars, or they're things you can do yourself with very little money. Now, one of the reasons I think it pays when you have a classic bike, a historic bike, this one's 43 years old, you know what? It, realistically, you're just never going to be able to buy another one. And if you let this one go to hell in a handbasket, or you crash it, or run it into a ditch, or whatever, the odds are good it's never going to be the same, and you won't be able to just go and buy another one. Now, I had a ride on the FZR the other day, and I was out uh, up by the Red Barn, if I remember right, up on Route 5. And I was going through the gears and going around and the twisties and having a great time. There's no traffic on the road. And I was just thinking, wow, the, that's, that's like a treasure to have one of these old bikes that you still enjoy. And not to have to spend an incredible amount of money or a credible amount of, an incredible amount of money to maintain it or ever, ever take it to a dealer. It's just nice. It's like an in-house thing for me. And I cleaned the rest of this up. So the next time we ride this bike, I'm not sure what his turn in the pitching rotation is going to be, but he will be at least as clean as I can make it. And Karen has just told me it's time to head out to Harbor Freight. Now how funny is this before we leave? Karen, we got a big package from Amazon. This scone mix and motorcycle. These are the things from Motion Pro for changing tires. Can you imagine a guy at Amazon that's packing this and he packs... <laughs> Cake? What is this really? Cake mix? Yeah. What are you looking at? That the scone mix. It's, what? It's scone mix. And and mo motorcycle parts come in the same box. What's wrong with that picture? Now, for whatever it's worth, I have about a half a dozen different brands of tire changing, the rim protectors. These are by far, by far, the best ones I have. Now, maybe they do make something better. This is made with Dupont Zytel, so that that probably means it's uh. You can eat them or something if, they're, if you get hungry. I don't know. Anyway, but I do know they work, and that's all that matters. That's another good tip. We're headed off, man. We can't get off the Harbor Freight here. So we're finally off on the beautiful tree-lined streets of Rutherford to our favorite place, Harbor Freight. Now, how convenient is this? Here's a Harbor Freight, a BMW motorcycle dealer, and cycle gear. All pretty close to my house, too. But this is the big one. Harbor Freight is the big one. We got a re-inventory. How do I look? Ready to rob Harbor Freight? So these are the two, the two products that Harbor Freight sells. This one is the better of the two. Now, I wanted to get two gallons, but they only had one left. But glad I got it. And of course, these are so handy and they're free. Free is good. All right, back to the shop. So we're back at the shop, and here's the product that I wanted to show. Of course, when I use this, I try to use rubber gloves. This is a really powerful degreaser. It'll etch aluminum. And if you have polished aluminum, 
it it and fresh paint it can really ruin it but used properly now i make my own solution what i do they tell you to mix it with if you're going to degrease things 20 parts of water to one of soap and if you're going to do the floor or something that it's two 200 to one well you know i because I'm an experimenter and I'm always fooling around. I found out that for cleaning the motorcycle parts, somewhere around 50-50 is about right for what I showed this morning out in the garage. That's 50-50. It's easy to do. Half water, half. But, but keep in mind, that is, a, that is a powerful cleaning. It's not like Windex. So what I did to demonstrate it, I took a piece of, this is an old bracket for something on a motorcycle, probably a camera mount or whatever, and I wanted to show what happens if you try to use this full strength. Because pretend this is a motorcycle part, and it's pot, it's just ordinary aluminum. And here you go, and you've got your degreaser, and you don't dilute it enough. What can happen to the aluminum? Now, to be honest, I have experimented with this for a lot of different things. Because there's some parts, when I'm disassembling a motorcycle, I want to get them as clean as possible as soon as possible. I don't want to play around, and I don't want... If there were a way of making stronger solutions, I want to know about it. So I just wanted to do, I thought this would be a really good demo. I'll just take this full strength and let it sit on the aluminum. I'll let it sit about five minutes. No point letting the, uh, <laughs> letting the camera on. You're probably bored enough with that big tirade this morning. But anyway, the, the whole idea of this is to pass on some information. Because to be honest, the first time I bought this stuff... I read the directions and I said, oh, that's bullshit. I'm going to just use it full strength. And wow, when I went to see what the aluminum looked like when I start cleaning it, I said, whoa, that, that was not a good choice. Now, maybe there's parts, I'm thinking, one of the things this would be fine for, if you took, you know, if you took the oil pan off the motorcycle and you soaked it in this, it probably wouldn't hurt anything. These big, heavy grease buildups doesn't seem to matter. Now, what I usually do is I have this in a spray bottle, 50-50, or an old Windex bottle, and then spray it on if you have something really to avoid getting it on paint, and then let it sit, usually five minutes is fine, and then just wipe it off. And you see, if there's any wax on, it's coming off. Any dirt, it's coming off. Actually, everything is going to come off with this. We're going to be down to raw aluminum. And so if you were going to paint this part, that would be a great time after you're done degreasing it to do a little sanding with some 400 paper and then immediately prime it. Don't, don't even wait 10 minutes. Dry it, heat it with a hair dryer, get all the moisture off and, and prime it. Because this is now, as it's sitting on here, it's going in and it's etching the aluminum. So we'll give this five minutes. All right, so five minutes has gone by and we're going to, let me just get a clean paper towel. And see if you can see what this has done. And it has it has really put a bite into the aluminum. And it is exactly it's that's about as greasy. You can even feel a squeak. I can feel it. The, 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 if, when you run your hand on this, you can feel it's etched. So it it what they're saying on the label is exactly true. Five minutes and it etches aluminum pretty it, it, it actually etches it pretty good, in fact. So here's the thing you usually would be dealing with with a motorcycle part. I, I, because of our restorations being all done, this is just a filthy, dirty uh, oil jug for oil that we keep by the lathe. But I just wanted to show how this, when you use this product, and I have tried this experiment many times, use it full strength. You've, But the whole purpose of this video is You've got to be very careful. It really does a great job, but you've got to be so careful whenever you're dealing with anything that might get damaged. And I want to show this like I always do in real time, because when you deal with plastic, you don't have to wait five minutes to show the result. Now, you can see this in real time. And it, there can't be a lot more grease than what's on that, because I keep that right by the lathe and it's always getting spots of grease on it. Now that plastic is definitely clean and it's etched. Now I think you can see that 
let's see if you can see it up close and personal. But so the the whole the objective of doing this test and passing the information on this product full strength has some value in the world of motorcycles, in the world of tools, in the world of cleaning driveways and garages and and everything. But but you're always if there's one thing you get from this video today, and it's one thing worth passing on, don't take this out to your motorcycle, put it in a spray thing full strength, and start spraying the whole... Well, you'll be really sorry. And then you'll curse me out. Well, you, maybe you curse me out anyway. Now, another interesting thing to try, and it's for my own information only, I have, this is an old flashlight, and it's anodized, so it's anodized aluminum. And what I want to see when I do this, what I call a test, I want to see if it's going to affect the anodizing at all because it's basically a tool that's if it's if I ruin the anodizing it won't matter but if I took my Rizoma $150 part and ruin the anodizing and on some of the Chinese parts the anodizing what I found is really 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 thin so and and of course people that don't understand anodizing anodizing is clear what they do with it's clear it etches the aluminum and then they put the dye in the dye is on top so it looks like this is safe i would say it's safe right now for anodizing nothing it didn't change the color at all but i didn't leave it on for five minutes either but what this would be really good for i guess from looking at this if you had a part i'm thinking of a perfect part the sprocks sprocket that's gold anodized to clean it with this solution, but I wouldn't want to get this on the chain. So I'd have to be real careful. And if I'm degreasing that sprocks or anything gold anodized or anodized period, but, but for sure it takes off all the grease. But again, that's not the whole, the whole objective. And this test could go on and on forever. The, the whole objective is again, it's a Harbor Freight product. This is the better of the two, the more condensed of the two. And it's a very inexpensive thing relative to other stuff that I've used. But if you're going to do other stuff like paint, I would use simple green. Or I would dilute this and do a test. And I do it 50-50, but I'm, I'm thinking that's even on the strong side. Maybe I should be doing it at some weaker uh, thing. So I don't know. But anyway, there's some good information to share today. I hope it was useful in some way. Well, but you don't know. Everybody's different. And some people don't care. They just ride the bike and don't clean it anyway. They don't brush their teeth or whatever. Eh, you, you never can tell. So I thought I'd mention one other thing. These are basically the four products that I use in the shop. And each one has, this is a motorcycle cleaner that uh, Bob Navola gave me. And it's, it's probably very similar to these. It seems like it doesn't hurt paint. It doesn't hurt etch aluminum and it does do a good job of getting rid of road grime and grease. Fabuloso, another product that in a spray bottle can get rid of grease and grime and dirt very nicely without hurting paint. Simple Green, what we try to use before we do any painting, sanding, uh, whatever. And then the, mo the final one that I think is the most powerful and of course you can water to your own cart's content. Any of these products can be watered down, but this is the one I want to concentrate on today to show this. I have some other things that I do with this that I'll show in the future, uh, but right now, this is a product that if you really want to have a clean, grease-free motorcycle and you want to experiment as far as watering it down and spraying it and wiping it and spraying with, with compressed air, this, this is the most powerful of the product, second most powerful, and then any, I guess this is already watered down, that's why of it. So I hope there's some good information there, and of course that's the whole purpose of making any of these videos, just to share information. Now of course in the shop, there's always projects all winter, in the summer, a minimum. One of our next projects is to be mounting up the rest of the tires that we have in inventory, but and I use those products whenever I take a tire off or put a wheel on. I want those products to, I want the wheel to be as clean as possible. So uh, before I end the video, let me thank the healthcare workers for, boy, they make this all possible for us. And number one, 
thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. It is an interesting little story. This guy, and, and again, we were chatting with him for a while. He, he, this bike only has 1,100 miles on it. He had used it, and when he started his family, he put the bike away for a while in storage, and while his kids were growing up, and he, this was this Sunday that I took this picture. It was the first day he said he was out on the bike. And he had a couple of his friends, of course, all the guys with the Ducatis look to see who's got the most carbon fiber parts and who's got the most chrome wing nuts and whatever. But we really did enjoy the company. We really had a good time. And these guys, both of these guys did track days. They did them where we do them too. So it was real nice and everybody's looking over each other's bike. And we have what we call the usual suspects that always look at everything they always want to know if it's a real ferrari and yeah we always manage to scam a few of them once in a while and then luciano adds his two cents in too but the rc51 was really nice to see a bike that old with, with only 1100 miles that's pretty unique and i thought out of the back of my eye because i was looking through a camera lens i thought this was there's an air coupe that buzzes the, the mountain every once in a while. This was not him, of course, but they come pretty close. And then I wanted to show Larry this. This group of guys came in with, a, I'm not sure if it was a club or they just had gotten together. And a few of them had these older, and this, this looks pretty similar to the 500 that Larry has and since we're trying to get ready for a track day they had a bunch of the 250s and it basi basically uh, like I'll call it the ninja club for lack of a better word a couple of women riding but then one of my favorites and, and I wanted to sit on this bike I wanted to see how how awkward it is for somebody like me to get on and off of these bikes that have a real high seat and I I wanted to see how it felt and then this of course is a 250 and so after I sat on it I said wow not bad at all not bad at all now I know Ray has some Kawasaki off-road on-road bikes, but but this one was really nice and comfortable And of course the usual suspects Joe was up there Now this was a, a unique Ducati. This is one of the last ones of The air cools that they made it's got oh they said a hundred horsepower and it's got a lot of little goodies on it but one of the things I liked is knowing that it's the last of the air-cooled Ducatis, so this would be somewhere down the road, I'm sure, will become a collector's item. We're looking at the wheels, because now with, with Luciano, he's looking at every aspect of Ducati, even even these these plated nuts that go on a wheel and stuff. It's like decorating a Christmas tree, I guess. I don't know. Then, the show ended. What happened is, we heard this guy coming up the mountain. And, and this is a really interesting story now. Of course, there aren't that many CBXs around, so when one shows up, a six-cylinder Honda, you look at it real close. When I looked at it real close, and I was so impressed with how neat and clean it was, and I mean, it was whistle, whistle clean. And I noticed, of course, that he had the turbo conversion on there, which has got to be extra work and extra maintenance and whatever. But, but the coolest thing is we started talking to the guy. And I asked him about all of the stuff that, that's involved in this. Now, one of the neat things is he said this is not a restored bike. It's a bike that... Somebody in Georgia makes these. I don't know who it is. Maybe somebody else out there knows. But he makes them all from new parts or repro parts. And so for all pur and I'm sure it's not cheap. For all purposes, it's a brand new bike.
Now, I don't know how you register something like that, I, but again, it, it's an unusual machine. No matter what angle you look at it, and this, this was from the same era as my GS, obviously a custom seat. And he was riding two up, he had a lady on the back. And it's got the real Comstar wheels and what looked like the spindly skinny forks that came with the bike. And again, you got to look at this from a lot of different angles. It's And the chrome valve cover sits outside I'm six or eight inches on each side of the tank. And a tank is pretty wide. So, very unusual bike. No matter what angle you look at, it's... It's really, this one was really, really nice. This was an exceptional bike. Now, I don't know, once you, uh, you know, once you put a turbo on it, I don't know what the difference in power is or whatever, but even if this was dead stock, it would be beautiful. And he said the guy that made the bike, the guy that assembled it or put it together was from Georgia. And then we were given, <laughs> looking over the, the, the BMWs, of course, and everybody has some comment whether they like it or they don't like it or it's too big or too small or, or whatever. nice picture of my shoes I don't know how that got taken <laughs> and and the Harley I like the best I like this even better than a V-Rod kind of has that flat tracker look and we were arguing for a while about you know what part of this should you customize next <laughs> these these things are so they're so pointless so eclectic one guy says leave it stock, one guy says chrome the whole thing out, one guy says yeah put this on, put a windshield on it. And one of the ladies that we met up there, she does track days. Now this is a little story, I was speaking to her, and this is the first time I've met her, and to be honest I don't know her, her name, but I will find out. And she has a set of pink leathers that she uses on track day. And so I was just thinking we ought to get Luciano to dress up in those pink leathers. And, well, that's where we're going to end that story. But we'll have more. And we'll see her again up there. And she knows all the usual suspects. So, But the pink leathers. I can't wait to see Luciano in the pink leathers. But anyway. And our other half of the weekend, we wanted to get some riding on the, on the old RD. And any time I ride the RD, I just have to... It brings back so many memories... We got to get the track bike ready. It's uh, pretty much ready, but and if Larry's going to go, he's got to get his track bike ready too. So the lift has been working perfectly. Ray and Malcolm and all the people that have these lifts, Pokey's got one, I think. These things really work well, worth every penny. And so they predicted rain all day. It was as cloudy as can be, but we decided to ride anyway. And this turned out to be pretty much fun. We went up to Eagle's Nest. Luciano's son was riding with us. Tried to get a couple of pictures, and you can see the rain in the background, the clouds. Of course, Joe had the MV Augusta. But you can see that the rain is coming in. Now, the first half of this ride was pretty dry and nice and everything. And we always try to get a couple pictures of the bike just for the memory bank. But then we ran into, and, and every weekend, every day you ride, there's always a new adventure. And this was the adventure. Now, we ran into these people, nice people from Canada. And this is really, I, I walked over and, you know, introduced myself. I said, wow, I love that seat. And I said, hmm. Then I looked at the seat from another angle, and I said, wow, that is really... I'm thinking, had I look on my bike or something, on my R1, I don't know. But look what, where, where the passenger rides, they got the inner tube thing underneath the seat. And I thought, that, now, I had never seen that before. That was pretty cool. And I, to be honest, I was impressed. 
that's some pretty high-tech technology there. So, like, like you always do with whenever you meet new people on motorcycles, everybody exchanges some some stories, and it turns out that today, this day, everybody on top of the mountain or on Eagle's Nest, you spoke Italian, except for me. And we were looking at the Valkyrie, of course. Um, it's it's a modified gold wing kind of motor. And the people had just come in from the Buffalo area, and so they followed us up to. We got a license plate. They followed us up to a Perkins so they could go up into the lookout tower. And when we got there, we just missed. There was a, a Bugatti Viron there, and the the Ranger had taken pictures of it, but I couldn't get them on my camera. They're just not bright enough. So there were some guys in sports cars, and of course, pretty much the usual guys that hang out with bikes. But again, there's always something new. There's always something that wasn't there the week before that makes the ride worthwhile. And especially, you have the usual people that all want to see, oh, I had an RD when I was a kid, and I'm 100 years old now, and the Brutale always draws a crowd. And it's funny, Joe had spent all day Saturday cleaning the bike, and of course, we knew it was going to rain somewhere in the course of this day. And he's getting a little frustrated with this camera that he bought that isn't working out the way he wanted to, so. And we have some of the guys that came over and we'll, it's this whole this whole thing of everybody wants to look at the RD, huh? It's unbelievable. Now, ran into another guy, and of course he was one of the guys looking at the RD, so we have to pay him pay a little tribute back. We went over to look at his rocket. And I had never really looked at one of these up close either, because I'm not into touring bikes. This was an, a really big motorcycle. This thing is really big. And we were looking at all the little the, the custom paint he had on it, and I mean, it, there had to be a hundred chrome parts on it, and of course, the, the whole thing with touring bikes is you can just keep adding parts and adding parts, it doesn't matter what they weigh, as long as they're shiny. And this was no exception. There were skulls and crossbones and pirate flags, and it was ready to go, boy. And the motor, I mean, that definitely, that could be a car motor. That is a really pretty motor. It's unbelievable. And I think the coolest part of this bike was that it had two pipes on one side and one on the other side, like an old H1 or an H2. Now, and these are the guys... This was another group of guys that came through. It wasn't the same ones, but we missed out on seeing all the high-end cars. But they're always up there from time to time, and we never really miss them. We just see them next time. I, in particular, like it when the Ferrari Club goes through. Or the Volkswagen Club. Now, this guy impressed everybody. You know, he had to do his little baby burnouts. Now, I don't know, you know, if if he really was dangerous or not, because the roads were really slippery. The, real, the roads were really not dry today. But you can see in the background, there's more clouds coming. And to be honest, from about three minutes after this picture was taken, we rode home in some pouring, crappy rain. Most, most of the, the ride home was not that really pleasant.